Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will solve another exercise on loops. So here is the exercise. I want you to write a program which reads a sequence of integers from the user and stops by displaying done when the sum of these values exceeds 100. So the program needs to keep reading integers from the user as long as their sum does not exceed 100. And when the sum exceeds 100, we want to print done, all right? So pause the video and try to solve this exercise. So let's see how we're going to solve this exercise. So obviously, we want to keep track of the sum of the values that the user enter, right? So we want to declare a variable sum to store the sum of these values. And after that, we want to read values from the user and add them to sum as long as the sum is less than or equal to 100. So at this point, we want to use a loop. And finally, when the sum exceeds 100, we want to display done. So let's go to IntelliJ. So first of all, we want to read values from the user, so we need a scanner object. So scanner s is equal to a new scanner, and we will pass system.in, alright? After that, we want to create our variable sum to keep track of the sum of the values that the user enter. So it is an integer, and it is called sum. And obviously, the initial value of sum is going to be zero. Now at this point, we want to keep reading values from the user. And we don't know how many values the user is going to enter, right? So let's use an infinite loop. I'm going to say, while true, we want to do something. So what do you want to do over here? First of all, let's tell the user to enter a number, all right? And let's use the print method, like this. Now after that, we want to read a number from the user and add it to the variable sum. So let's say we want to add to the variable sum as dot next integer. So each time we will read an integer from the user and add it to the variable sum, all right? Now as you can see, this is an infinite loop, so it will never stop. We need to say when we want to break out from this loop. So as we said, if the sum is greater than 100, we want to stop, right? So over here, I'm going to say break. And this is it. After we break out from the loop, we are going to print done. And let's also concatenate the value of sum with done, like this. So we can see the sum of the values that the user entered, all right? So this is our program. Let's run it. So at this point, the sum is equal to zero, and now we are asked to enter a number. So for example, let's enter 20 and press enter. So what happened? We read the 20 over here and added it to the variable sum. So sum is equal to 20. Now is 20 greater than 100? No, this is false. So this break will not be executed and we will continue executing the while loop. So as you can see, we are finished. So we will go and check the condition. In this case, the condition is true. So we are asked to enter another number. So let's enter 30, for example. Now sum is equal to 50. And also, we are asked to enter another number. So let's enter 50 for example. Now sum is equal to 100. And also, this condition is false. Because 100 is not greater than 100. So we are asked to enter another number. Let's say you enter 0. So sum is still equal to 100, alright? Now I'm going to enter 10 and press enter. So as you can see, we broke out from the loop and the sum is 110. So over here, we read 10 and added it to sum. So now sum is equal to 110. So is 110 greater than 100? Yes, this is true. So we will break out from the loop. And over here, we are going to print done concatenated with 110. And this is what we see over here, okay? Now let's make some changes to this code. So I'm going to change the condition. I'm going to say I want to run this loop as long as sum is less than or equal to 100. And over here, I'm going to remove this if statement, okay? So as you can see, the condition now depends on the variable sum. And we know that the variable sum starts at zero. So this loop will be executed at least once. And in the first iteration, we are going to ask the user for the first value. And then we are going to add it to the variable sum. And then we will go and check the condition. If sum is not less than or equal to 100, we will not execute the loop and we are going to print sum over here, all right? So let's run this program. So as you can see, we have the same thing. Let's enter 100. So now sum is equal to 100. And now let's enter 10. So the variable sum will be equal to 110. So press enter, and as you can see, we have the same thing. Done 110, okay? Now, since this while loop depends on an input from the user, let's change it to a do while loop. So let me get this code from over here and put it after the braces with a semicolon. And I'm going to put a space over here. And after that, we will put the do keyword over here. So now this is a do while loop and we have the same thing. We will execute the first iteration and then we will start checking the condition. And this is the same thing that we had from a little bit. Because the initial value of sum is equal to zero, so we know that the while loop will be executed at least once. Okay? So let's run the program. And over here, I'm going to enter 200. Press enter. 
and as you can see done 200 run the program again let's say 50 and 50 and 50 so as you can see done 150 now what if we want to solve this exercise using a for loop we can easily do that right but as you know usually in a for loop we use a variable i and in this case i don't need the variable i in the previous exercise we needed the variable i because we were iterating on a group of numbers for example the numbers between 1 and 100 but in this case we are not doing that so we don't need a variable i and this is why i solved this exercise using a while loop or a do while loop and over here there is an extra space so let's organize the code and this is it so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video